Thank you for joining me for this webinar, Getting On With Others. Fundamentally at work, we all need to be able to relate to other people. We can't sit on a desert island. Each day, most of us need to interact with others, whether they be colleagues, clients, prospective clients, other contacts. Most of the clients I work with have challenges related to other people. And this is because fundamentally we all are different in terms of our assumptions, our values, our experience, our beliefs and our ways of working. So I wanted to record this short webinar to give you some tips on how to interact more effectively with others that will give you more positive outcomes. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Joanna Godoyne and I run Inside Out Image and have done for nearly a decade now. And everything I do is around helping people work on their personal impact and their relationship management skills. So how they relate to others in every professional scenario. So today we're talking about that more generally, but I work very specifically with people on meetings, networking skills, how to navigate office politics, how to present effectively. All those times when we need to engage with others and build rapport to get things done. I work with clients individually and also run group sessions, masterclasses, workshops, and I also speak at conferences and other events as well. Before I ran Inside Out Image, I worked in the corporate world, initially in marketing and then in consultancy for several years. So that was my background up until that point. So without further ado, let's get on to today's webinar. And my objective is to help you get on with others better at work. And I've said a little bit about this already, but fundamentally a reminder of the why, because positive professional relationships are absolutely key to your own career progression and to the performance of your organisation, whatever type of organisation that may be. Because if people aren't engaging well with each other, that can have really negative consequences. So an important aspect to focus on. And I am going to be covering seven key tips today for you. Firstly, just to say that it is very, very common at work, even if you've had a successful career, to hit a block at some point. All of my clients have had good careers. They've achieved a lot and that usually they're in mid-career, but they've just had something happen that's not working for them. And it might be a very definite something, a change at work, a new line manager, a new situation, or they might not be sure what it is actually, but they just know they need to work on some new skills uh, to progress from where they actually are at that point. And usually, as I said earlier, the block is related to other people. And that might be about what my clients perceive has been done to them or their own lack of skills and challenges that relate to other people. So in this webinar, I am going to look at these seven top considerations. There are many more to help you get on with others better, to which will improve your working environment and to help you and also those around you progress your careers. So we're going to stay on this slide for a little while as I talk through the seven. So the first one is to put yourself in other people's shoes. And this might sound an obvious one, but we all do this all the time in terms of just thinking people behave as we do and they will think as we do and assume that they are like us when actually people think in many different ways. So it is really vital to take the time and think about where someone's really coming from. When you're having that challenging conversation with your boss and you just don't understand why they can't see your point of view, thinking about well, what else is it that's going on for them that could be making them think differently. Maybe it's things you don't know from the people they report to, another situation in the organisation, maybe it's something more personal that's affecting them, but really trying to think about where could they be coming from. We can't always come up with the answers here, but if you even start to think that way, it will help how you come across when you're engaging with that person. 
The second tip is to avoid reacting immediately to something you hear. Uh, I suppose what I really mean here is something particularly you don't like that you hear. There's a lot of pre pressure in today's uh, working world that we need to respond quickly, we need to get things done, but actually responding quickly can sometimes be the wrong thing to do. Often we need time to think about what we've heard, especially if it's something that we're less keen on. And there's nothing wrong with saying to people, can I just have a think about that and come back to you? Now, clearly, we don't want to be saying that about absolutely everything um, in a particular scenario of a meeting. But actually doing that can often make us come back in a more measured way with a more credible, valuable response. So do make sure you are asking if you need more time to think about it. And the other person should hopefully be pleased that you're actually bothering to take the time to reflect on what they've said. Thirdly, an obvious point, but listen and really listening to someone. What are they saying and what are they not saying? Making sure you're taking the time to hear that and particularly if they're in a negative frame of mind to make sure they feel heard because very often if they don't feel heard you won't be able to move on. Also listening, not just to respond, but to fully understand. Often we're feeling pressured when we're listening. What are we going to say next? And of course, we are going to need to come up with a response at some point. But if you're too focused on that, you won't be really hearing that other person. So listening, a very key skill and an often underused one. The fourth one is simply understanding people do make mistakes. Now, of course, performance at work matters, but everyone is human and things happen. And often it's what's behind the mistake. Was it a genuine mistake or did they take too big a risk or did they do something on purpose? But having a fundamental understanding that sometimes people just do make the wrong call. And often it's what they do afterwards to uh, get over that that's more important than the actual mistake itself. And just having a bit of grace with people that things do go wrong sometimes. And sometimes it's not one person's mistake and there isn't blame to be laid. This is not saying that people's performance shouldn't be looked at. And of course, if people are making a lot of mistakes, the underlying cause and issue needs to be looked at. But having an appreciation that things do happen. The fifth one is appreciating people for their strengths. So that means actually acknowledging them sometimes and also showing some gratitude there as well when people have particularly done something helpful or uh, exceeded expectations. Making sure people are clear on what their strengths are so that they feel built up by that and encouraged to move forward. And related to that, making sure people are supported in their development areas. So acknowledging that people do have development areas, we all do, and making sure they're clear on them and looking at what can be done to support them, whether that's from you or from other people. Feedback is really key, clear feedback too, so that people can actually go and do something as a result of the feedback they get. I have uh, clients very often that say, oh, my boss says I need to work on my presence, for example. Now we can all come up with an idea of what that might mean, but actually, do we really understand what that boss means by it? Because if we're not working on what they mean, then we're, that's probably not going to be very helpful for the person's career. So do make sure if you're getting feedback yourself that you really understand what that person means where possible. You're getting examples about that. And certainly if you're giving someone feedback on the development areas, then you are being as clear as you can be. The sixth one might seem quite obvious as well, but very often people don't, don't do it, is only say things about people you'd say to them in person. So it's very easy when you're having a conversation with someone and someone you want to build a relationship with, rapport with, to give them information or a point of view that maybe you shouldn't. So of course you're going to talk to your boss about the development of your team and people's strengths and weaknesses. But just really think about what you are saying, because sometimes things can come back to bite you if you haven't uh, spoken about others in an appropriate way. And the final point is make sure you're always making time for your relationships, continually building those relationships. Which are the key relationships you need to focus on, both internally and externally, 
strategically, who are those around you, above you, your peer group, below you, and make sure you're making an effort with those because the better those relationships are ongoing, when a challenge comes, it will be a lot easier to deal with. Uh, people often wonder why something's gone so wrong and it's because they didn't invest enough time up front in that. So really taking time to consider that and look at building those relationships. Fundamentally, you won't like everyone at work and they won't like you, but it's really key to make the time to connect with people and as much as possible build relationships. And yeah, that's really important ongoing for your own career and just your environment at work as well. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being strategic. We can't uh, spend hours and hours each week building relationships, but really have a sit down and a think about which key relationships do I have at work? Which do I not yet have that I need? And then looking at what the focus points need to be against each of those to move you forward. So I hope that was helpful for you. Some key points to reflect on, giving you some food for thought. If you are ready for more tailored advice, perhaps you're in a difficult situation with someone at work, then book a career booster call with me. Um, I'm very happy to speak to you. They're usually about half an hour, uh, no obligation conversation uh, to talk through where you're at and to hopefully give you some tips to help you. You can see my email address is on the screen there to contact me for that. If you'd like to do some reading and you want to work more on this relationships aspect to hone your skills, uh, I have got a series, Nine Neglected Skills for Career Success. It's uh, five emails and a booklet at the end that you can download with loads of practical tips and advice. And there's quite a bit in that on building different types of relationships. So you can see the link there to get that series and booklet. So feel free to do that. You can, of course, connect with me on LinkedIn and you can find me on other social media. I'm very easy to find. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And if at any point you've got any questions on your personal impact or how to build better relationships at work, anything that's stopping you in your career, do feel free to contact me. I'm very happy to help, whether that's in a few weeks time or in several months time. Very often people hear something like this and then they, they don't have anything particular at the time, but a year later, something might come up and they contact me. So do feel free to do that. So I hope that's been helpful for you today and uh, do contact me if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.